Hi everyone, I'm here to present the research project of Group 3 from Isabella de los Reyes entitled The Utilization and Characterization of Rice Meal or Rice Sativa and Coconut Husk Fibers or Cocos Nucifera as a Biomass Briquette and the Design of an Improvised Briquette Machine. Questionnaire revealed that rice husks and coconut shells are one of the most abundant agricultural waste in the Philippines, that in the need to lessen carbon emission in the atmosphere and the enlarging value of waste, the researchers aim to design and construct a briquette machine that can produce biomass briquettes generated from these agricultural wastes. The researchers produced three kinds of bio briquettes with different compositions. The constructed machine was proved to be applicable in producing cost-effective and high-quality biomass briquettes. Thus, this study is deemed beneficial in order to address the need for sustainable bioenergy and biofuel and the need to lessen the growing waste problem our environment is facing. Hi, I'm Gerlin B. Gonzalez and I'm here to present the introduction. The most frequent agricultural waste in the Philippines is rice husks and coconut husks which are usually thrown away rather than recycled. Agricultural waste creates harmful pollutants that contribute to climate change when it is disposed in landfills or burned in a trash incinerator. This leads to the production of biobriquettes. Biobriquettes are renewable energy sources that are made mostly from processed agricultural and biological waste. In an article written by Wyoliya et al. 2017, infers that the demand for fossil fuels are at its peak. Fossil fuels are non-renewable energy sources, will run out by the time if continuously used. Biomass is an alternative energy source that, when processed properly, can replace coal in the primary energy mix. Rice husks and coconut husks contain a high calorific value, providing its combustibility and ability to hold heat. Moreover, according to Sharma Priyanka and Sharma 2015, briquettes made from biomass are a carbon-free renewable energy source. Biobriquette production not only provides a long-term solution for agricultural waste recycling, but it also improves the economy by lowering carbon emissions. Because to the abundance of coconut husks in the markets and the large number of rice farm in Balayan, the researchers were intrigued by the topic and offered that they focus on employing this study. Hi, I am Arjal de Castro and I am here to present the statement of the problem. Rice cells and coconut shells are the most widely flaunted agricultural pollutant. Agricultural waste is improperly disposed of, endangering human health and causing environmental issues such as water and air pollution. The fuel qualities of these agricultural waste can be utilized and biomass briquettes can be developed. The goal of this research is to design and build an improvised briquette machine that can make biomass briquettes out of rice husks and coconut husk in order to define a long-term energy source. The following research questions will be addressed in this study. 1. What are the attributes of the biomass briquettes in terms of 1.1 burning rate, 1.2 cooking efficiency? 2. Is there a significant difference between the burning rate, cooking efficiency, ignition time, and time of boiling water in the different biomass briquettes? I am Kano Bialcedo and I'm here to present the review of related literature. Using agricultural residues as a biomass briquetting, an alternative source of energy. In this study, the researchers stated that biomass briquette has superior qualities as well as environmental benefits in comparison with coal as these briquettes are made from renewable resources. It is relevant to the present study because this study also shows that agricultural waste can be useful and be made as an alternative source of energy. This study used various agricultural waste such as coffee husk, mustard stacks, and more. And they used different technologies and methods to make biomass briquettes, which differs from the current study because in the present study, the researchers focused only on improvising a briquette machine that can produce briquettes from the two particular agricultural waste which are the rice husk and coconut husk. Briquetting of sugarcane bagasse as a proper waste management technology in Vietnam. According to Anna Brunerova, 
had a crew beat, Milan Brusek and others a study in year 2020 imparts the use of high-pressure briquetting technology to the waste management of sugarcane processing in Vietnam. The fuel parameters analysis proved high quality level of low ash content and high calorific values. The analysis of such waste biomass proves its great potential for energy recovery, thus the advantage of its polarization within the sustainable technologies. Good day, I am Shalome B. Manalo. And now, let us proceed to the research methodology. Gathering of materials. The rice husk was collected at Barangay Navotas, Balayan, Batangas, while the coconut husk was acquired at Barangay Potol, Balayan, Batangas. Furthermore, the waste paper used in the production of the biomass briquette was collected from various households in Balayan. Design and construction of improvised briquette machine. The researchers originally sketched the improvised briquette machine. The body and base of the improvised machine were constructed from 2 by 6 inch zipper lines. It stands 110 centimeters tall and 40 centimeters wide. The base, on the other hand, is made of 340 centimeters long zipper lines. There are two holes in the base. Through these holes, 2 inch PVC pipes are connected. The base also includes two 4 inch PVC pipes. The 1 inch pipes inside the Two 4-inch pipes were drilled with small holes to separate the water from the agricultural waste. A 3.5-inch molding press is placed inside the pipes to press the agricultural waste. The block of wood will then be placed on the top of the molding press to support the jack lift, which will be used to firmly press and mold the agricultural waste into 20cm briquettes. Preparation of Raw Materials 1,000 grams of rice husk and coconut husk were powdered through an industrial blender after it is sifted and strained to remove unwanted debris. For the binder, 2,000 grams of paper were shredded through a paper shredder. A bucket containing 2,000 ml of tap water was used for each raw material in order to soak them. The rice husk, coconut husk, and waste paper were soaked for 48 hours individually. The production of biomass briquettes. Based on the table, the machine is expected to produce three biomass briquettes with different ratios of rice husk, coconut husk, and waste paper. Treatment A was composed of 800 grams of rice husk and 800 grams of coconut husk. Treatment B was composed of 1,000 grams of rice husk and 600 grams of coconut husk. Treatment C was composed of 600 grams of rice husk and 1,000 grams of coconut husk. Moreover, all of the briquettes had the same amount of waste paper, which is 400 grams. After the briquettes were made, it was sun-dried for one week to assure the briquettes has no more water content. Conduct of different evaluation measures. Burning rate. The biomass briquettes were burned and tested inside a domestic briquette stove. The time was measured through the use of a digital timer set to 5 minutes while the initial weight of briquettes and burnt briquettes were scaled on the weighing scale in grams. The burning rate was computed using the formula. Burning rate equals initial weight minus final weight over the total time taken. Cooking efficiency To test the efficiency of each treatment of the biomass briquette, various experiments were done such as ignition time, boiling of water, and burning time. Ignition time. In a briquette stove, 500 grams of briquettes were placed and it was ignited with a lighter. With the use of a digital timer, the time it took for the briquette to be ignited and maintain its temperature was measured. Time of boiling water. Using a stainless steel pot, 200 ml of tap water was measured with a beaker and placed in the briquette stove. Using a digital timer with a thermometer, it will measure how much time it will take for the water to reach its boiling point. Burning time. To measure the burning time of each biomass briquette, a digital timer was used. Once the briquette has ignited, the time will start and will record until the briquette will lose its temperature. And for the statistical treatment, the statistical analysis were performed using a computer software program, Statistical Package for Social Science. The results from different briquettes were presented in percentage compared using one-way analysis of variance. From the results of the treatment A appeared to have a dark brown to black color and acquired to have the highest burning time of 35.5 minutes, while treatment C had the fastest time in boiling the water and fastest ignition time. Three different tests were conducted to determine the efficiency of each treatment. 
burning rate to determine the rate at which a certain mass of fuel is combusted in air, cooking efficiency to indicate the power reaction of biobriquettes when cooking, and combustibility to measure how easily briquettes burst into flame and ignite. Among the three variables, treatment P was considered as the most efficient among the biomass briquettes that came up with the highest recorded peak temperature with 398 degrees Celsius and it consumed 35.5 of the burned briquette with a given amount of time. Moreover, it can be best option to be used in cooking as a source of energy. The pace at which a certain amount of fuel was burned in air was characterized as the burning rate. The time, initial, and final weight of each treatment were all recorded by the researchers. Table 2 shows that the findings of the biomass briquette's burning rate, the results revealed that the biomass briquette's final weight and burning rate in percent have a significant relationship. Treatment B with 50% rice husk and 30% coconut husk have a higher burning rate than treatment A that has a 40% rice husk and 40% coconut husk, and treatment C 40% rice husk and 40% coconut husk. Furthermore, having a larger amount of rice husk and an ample amount of coconut husk will have a higher burning rate but lower amount of weight in the final weight of the biomass briquette may. Using one-way ANOVA test, the computed F value of 11.16 is higher than the F critical value of 5.14 and the P value 0.04 is less than the 0.05 level of significance, indicating that the null hypothesis is rejected, indicating that there is a substantial difference in the effectiveness of various biomass briquettes. The machine was demonstrated to be capable of making cost-effective and high-quality quality biomass briquettes. Hi, I'm Jimel Simakalindong and I'm here to present the conclusion and recommendations. The utilization of rice husk and coconut husk as biomass briquettes was investigated in this study. In addition, the constructed briquette machine in this study produced three kinds of biobriquettes with different compositions. They were all tested by the researchers in various setups and characterized the effectiveness of each biobriquette. Based on the result of this study, the following conclusions were drawn. Since the null hypothesis is rejected, therefore there is a significant difference in the efficiency of the biomass briquettes in terms of burning rate and cooking efficiency. Treatment B has 43.63% burning rate and has the highest burning rate among other treatments, with treatment A having 43.1% and treatment C having 40.58%. When the rice husk has a greater ratio than coconut husk, the briquette will have a higher burning rate but less weight. Treatment C had the highest cooking efficiency in terms of ignition time, having 0.10, and time of boiling water having 4.5. However, treatment A had the longest burning time of 35.5 compared to 32 of treatment C and 25 of treatment E. Overall, treatment A was considered the most efficient briquette and the best alternative for use in cooking as a source of energy because it has the highest recorded peak temperature of 392 degrees Celsius and it consumed 35.5% of the burned briquette with a given amount of time. The researchers would like to make the following recommendations. Given that the constructed machine was proven to be applicable to producing different biomass briquettes that are effective in all setups. Number 1. To have an openable molder that will make the bio briquettes get out of the mold easily. Since the briquettes leave no space in the molder when compressed, it is hard to push them out of the machine only by hand force. Number 2. To add more holes to the pipe inside the machine for the water to flow easily. Number 3. To produce bio briquettes using the composition of other solid waste materials. A new source of renewable energy that would lessen the pollution and the use of fossil fuels. Number 4. To better construct the machine that can improve the production rate of briquettes. To do work efficiently. Number 5. To use a convection over or dehydrator to speed up the drying time of the briquette.